Hello YouTube, this is Heratohtori and uh, today I wanted to make a video on Kerbal Space Program regarding turbines how to build them, different types and uh, how to use them so let's get to it okay so there's two kinds of turbines you can look up uh, their definitions on Wikipedia, but basically there's reaction turbines and uh, then there's impulse turbines and you can build both in KSP and I'm going to demonstrate uh, just how. The parts uh, you, or mods you need for this is the procedural parts, the procedural uh, wings, uh, infernal robotics and uh, tweak scale to scale things of obviously. To begin I'm going to start with this procedural structural element and set it to 1.5 diameter and that will act as our uh, turbine housing uh, base. I'm going to affix it to the ground with uh, docking clamps, uh, hang on, there's launch clamps. The three of them, right like that. Okay, then I'm going to give it some power because I need that electrical power for the rotatrons, which will be there later on, and something to replenish the lost charge. Okay, now this is the bearing part that we are using. It's the docking washer freely moving, and we are going to scale it to small. So that's, uh, that's our uh, bearing for our uh, turbine's rotor. The rotor, all turbines have a rotor, it's the, it's the part that spins. And we are going to make this part out of this structural element, make it a little bit more narrow. 7 point, uh, 75 centimeters. And we are also reducing its length to something like that, that looks okay. Now then, we're going to fix its uh, other end as well, Hang on. with another bearing, and then give it another uh, structural element. And that will act as a counterpiece. And now we have three freely moving parts, the base, the center and the top. But we, are, we want to fix the top and bottom together, and to do that we are using space tape. That looks good. So now we have this fixture here, with a freely spinning part in the middle. And uh, we're going to eventually get this part to spin, but to make it actually useful, we're going to have to have some sort of shaft to transfer the torque. And to do that, I'm going to make a shaft out of this structural element. I'm going to make this 0 0.625, and we are going to snap it to the top node of this rotator, rotatron. And to do that, I'm going to enable. Uh, allow part clipping in editors. By the way, this menu is accessible via Alt F12, just in case you haven't known it before. Now you know. And now I can clip this through this part and it should snap onto the top part of this rotatron, like that. You can check it by changing its diameter and see that you can see it through that gap there. That's working as intended. Now we have a fixture here and a spinning part here. These parts are linked together now. But uh, we still need more stability for this. Because if we don't fix this top here into anything, it can wobble to the side and it can easily make the turbine unstable. So we are going to put yet more bearing on top. And then a final top piece to stabilize everything. Like 
this and then use these struts to bind everything together like this. And now we have a fixture of top, center and bottom with the rotating uh, part in the middle. And that's basically the basic structure of the turbine. Now we're going to attach some useful stuff to the, to the working shaft here, like this. Use four, four only. Makes things simpler. And to those rotators, I will attach these wings. Because this is the way we want the turbine to spin. And now to adjust the scale of these things. That looks about right. And now I'm going to also make the root a little bit thicker so that it maybe makes the connection a little stronger. Maybe it doesn't, but it looks better anyway. <laughs> That's our base structure and the working part of our turbine uh, laid out. Now we need to figure out how to make this thing spin and there's two ways to make it happen. Well, first one is a reaction turbine where you can put moving nozzles under the rotor of your turbine, like so. And this is a very straightforward design. Trust comes this way and the turbine spins other way and produces torque. The torque is transferred to this shaft which spins the rotor. That's fairly straightforward. So, now that it is uh, going to be uh, Attach like this, I'm going to enable infinite fuel because this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm not going to bother trying to get fuel lines feeding into these uh, these rockets. It's just not worth it. But this is our uh, basic turbine design complete. In, okay, it's it's reaction control. Reaction turbine test. Save. I'm going to actually need to give it a control unit. Like this. Save. And we are going to need to adjust the infernal robotics by adding a new group for this uh, uh, rotor blades pitch. One and two for controlling them. And that's that. Save and launch. Okay, here's our basic turbine design and uh, you can already see that it's for some reason the blades are spinning but if we enable the rockets you can see the very predictable outcome if I enable the thrust the whole thing starts to spin and build up speed with controls two, with number, numbers 1 and 2 I can adjust the attitude of these uh, rotor blades to produce lift up or down. And uh, let's enable aerodynamic visualizations. 
from FAR. If I adjust the pitch too much, the wings will stall. That's the red shader there. So that's a useful, uh, useful uh, identification for when the rotor is stalled. Now, this is a very simple design, and it it has the advantage of transferring all the torque from this uh, these uh, engines directly into the torque of the rotor shaft. So this is a very straightforward design. It accelerates fairly quickly. But the problem is with this design, as you can see, that it picks up speed, is that you can see the gap between this uh, central rotor and the uh, actual actual nozzles. It starts to widen up as it, uh, it spins up faster and faster. These rockets sort of detach or stretch outward by the centripetal forces, and uh, that causes uh, some instability in, the, in that rotor because they are not necessarily the same distance away from that shaft. So this design is very good for low speed applications uh, where you don't need uh, very high speeds but you need a lot of torque. So that's, this one is perfect for those. Let's reduce the speed a little bit. And now if I if I control the pitch I can produce lift or uh, put down uh, this lift and uh, it should be able to fly this thing by just uh, lifting up or down and as predicted it lifts up you can control the vertical speed by adjusting the rotor uh, angle And also by controlling the rotor RPM with throttle. And it's actually possible to make a auto rotation landing with this thing if I'm careful about uh, how I manage to manage the lift from this. Well, apparently I wasn't careful enough. Anyway, that's the basic design of a reaction turbine. Let's revert here. And I'm going to construct an impulse part turbine instead. Now with this impulse turbine it, it doesn't rely on uh, reaction power directly. Instead, it uh, uses something called uh, impulse... Well, well, impulse turbine of course it uses impulse, but it uses impulse of collisions basically. So I'm going to have to use this exhaust to collide with something, and that something is wings. I'm going to need to set up the size for these wings, just right. Frustrating and annoying to fiddle with these things. That seems about right. It's not that necessarily that accurate because this is just a demonstration. And now I'm switching to eight way symmetry and fill the gaps. And now we have a basic impulse turbine design. staging while we are at it. And the way this turbine works is slightly different from the previous one. See, the first difference is that uh, is that this uh, rockets are fixed to the turbine housing itself. These do not spin around with the rotor. Instead they uh, have a, a static thrust here static exhaust flow, you could say, and uh, these wings collide with that and they get propelled backwards and that transfers into torque on this uh, shaft which spins the rotor of course. The basics uh, are simple, 
you control it by adjusting the throttle, increasing the torque on this rotor, which transfers the torque here. But this uh, has the advantage of being uh, more lightweight on the rotor, so it uh, ends up a slightly more stable design. You can see it's, it's wobbling slightly, but it's wobbling less than, uh, than the reaction turbine did at this point, at this speed. There's no rockets to fly around uh, wildly, so this this is uh, an ideal uh, system for high-speed turbine applications, in my opinion. These guys work the same as before, you can control up or down. But, with this turbine, you have to be very careful, because there's less torque on the, on the turbine itself. If you uh, use a lot of uh, drag, then the ro rotor will slow down significantly in very quick succession, and if that happens, you will lose all your propulsion, and you need to reduce the pitch and let it uh, spin up again. Okay, let's fly this thing. And another thing you can immediately notice is that this actually applies torque to the fixture of the turbine itself, rather than having the rotors, uh, nozzles fixed on the rotor. And uh, that's something you need to take into account in, uh, in choosing your turbine design. thing can also be landed with, with by controlling this, uh, this thrust. I just hope we don't hit the landing pad directly down. land here because this is straight down on the on those uh, landing clamps or, or docking whatever launch clamps launch clamps is where I was looking for this is an interesting way to fly because you only have yeah as I was saying you only have control for up and down and uh, Without any means of controlling the pitch roll and yaw, then you uh, eventually start to do some weird stuff, like a boomerang, sort of. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, I'm going to show a few, uh, two ways of uh, applying these turbines in, uh, in a vehicle. And the first one is uh, going to be a turboprop aircraft. Just actually going to save Jebediah first because I think he's starving, running out of life support. Let's recover Jebediah. And now I'm free to do stuff without those annoying messages of Jebediah running out of uh, life support. scroll down this list to Turbine Fighter Test 01. This very imaginative name is a good one for demonstration purposes. It has a big turbine in the front. I won't open it for now, but it's basically a powerful impulse turbine with eight, uh, hang on, 16 different uh, burners. So it provides a lot of torque that I have to deal with when I'm flying this thing. Alright. Everything seems functional. 
going to raise the flaps for, for takeoff because I don't want to bother with those. As you can see, this spins up really fast because it's a small propeller with a large turbine. And with number two control, I can increase prop pitch and uh, to produce thrust from those uh, spinning wings that you call propeller. Basically, the faster this thing goes, the more stable it is. I'm going to try to accelerate to about 200 kilometers per hour before I try to rotate and take off but it's being fairly uncontrollable doing a lot of uh, seeking on yaw as I increase the increase the oh. well I guess this is one way to take off This is a uh, fairly pleasant for aircraft to fly after you got it to, into the air. And, uh, the big difference to, to a normal uh, normal propeller driven aircraft in a KSP would be that if you just put an engine in front that has something that looks like a propeller, it doesn't actually produce the same effects as a real propeller in an aircraft. It doesn't have the torque effect, it doesn't have P factor. Uh, it doesn't. You, you don't need to worry about propeller pitch or uh, propeller blade stalls and uh, or things like things like that. With this thing, you have to control everything everything manually. The throttle is the engine power, but uh, the propeller pitch gives you the speed. As you can see, if I apply full power, then I can just drive the propeller pitch up so that it accelerates to insane speeds, like over 500 kilometers per hour. Well, I'm climbing right now, so... Yeah, this is this is the way I would use a, a turbo turbo prop engine. flight right now and the thing about flying with cockpit view with uh, head tracking enabled is that it just gives you so much better uh, control over where your aircraft is what your flight path is then the external view Now I'm going to land this thing, just going to cut throttle completely and then feather the propeller. 
which is another thing that is fairly interesting to do because you can you can uh, definitely check out the, the different uh, effects of having a propeller at full pitch or a full feathered position and it's how, how it affects your uh, flight characteristics because a propeller if it's stuck on the high on low angles then it it will just uh, it's just like uh, an air brake and this thing actually if you just if you just use the propeller in a different direction you can use it just like a just like a thrust reverser on a jet let my airspeed go a little bit too low here so I'm having a little difficulty controlling this landing but it's okay we're not too fuzzy about landing. Jebediah doesn't care where he lands. The plane is intact anyway. So, there's one example of using a turbine in a vehicle. I'm going to revert to displaced plane hangar. And I'm going to show a different vehicle that also uses a turbine. So this design is actually using a coaxial turboprop design. It has uh, two rotors, obviously, but it also has two t separate turbine assemblies. One is partially hidden here, so I'm going to just flip this up and uh, show it like this. So, the lower turbine is... Uh, hang on, I'm going to do something to make it more, more visible, or better visible, so I should say. Like this. So, yeah. This uh, lo lower turbine is spinning in the opposite direction than the other, so the torque effects negate each other. This doesn't provide any torque. The lower turbine is hooked to a, a narrow shaft that goes all the way up from here to here. You can hear, see the end of it here. And you can see uh, struts attaching to this part, which uh, obviously spins this upper rotor. The upper turbine has a slight thicker shaft that goes from this part to this here, you can see the end of it here. And uh, similarly it's attached to the lower rotor with the struts. I'm going to reload the craft just so you can... you don't need to see me reassemble it. hope the game doesn't crash. Okay, so now we, we're just going to fly it. Let's see if I can demonstrate its uh, characteristics. Right. One thing you will note that this thing has uh, RCS controls on the blades or, bl or the blade tips, and this is to uh, provide some sort of uh, cyclic control uh, because th you can't do it with control surfaces at the moment. They don't sense the face angle of the rotor correctly at the moment. So as the rotor spins, the assignments for the control surfaces and how they should move remain static. So that causes problems. It doesn't work like it should. Anyway, RCS always monitors its position relative to the center of gravity. So when this rotor is here and, you, and I'm applying, uh, let's say, roll left command, these, uh, these RCS thrusters would fire down and when they pass to the other side they would fire up. So I can demonstrate that. But let's first uh, 
Enable infinite RCS. And as you can see, I already enabled the thrusters, so the rotor is starting to spin. But this turbine spins in this direction, the same direction as the top rotor, while this top turbine spins in the same direction as the lower rotor. So they are coaxially joined. Now then, enable RCS. I'm going to just, while the rotors are spinning slowly, I'm going to use that to apply to the roll to the left. And you can see the RCS jets firing on the rotors and alternating depending on where the, each blade is. So that's fairly impressive and smart. And I'm pretty happy it works that way because otherwise it would be completely uncontrollable. Even though I do have a pair of a advanced SAS inside this cockpit here, or the, the fuselage. The yaw control is also done with RCS at the moment. Okay, let's throttle up the turbines. You can see with the heavier rotors it takes a, a longer while to, for them to spin up. Okay, let's uh, take off. And with this helicopter design, as you can see, it sort of wants to uh, automatically go forward once you take off, which is a fairly good idea to have for our helicopter. And I'm going to just uh, fly around the uh, KSP or KSC a little, see how how, uh, how I can do. I'm going to reduce power to 50, because I was seeing some wobbling on the turbine. That's uh, indicative of rotor overspeed when it's wobbling like that. So I can increase the pitch a little bit and uh, slow down the rotors a little and it settles down a little. But on the other hand I don't want to let the rotors uh, rotor speed go down too much because that would just uh, cause a loss of lift and I would probably crash. So this is a sort of a different way to experience flight around the KSC. It's, uh, it's very much uh, a different sort of experience than you get from uh, typical fast jet flights. But it's definitely worth, worth trying this, because it's, it's fun, it's really fun. Especially when you do stuff, stuff like this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fly up to the VAB's top and launch on the helipad there. Need to see if I can land there with minimum amount of fuss.
do, I'm not going to need much power for landing this thing. So, hopefully I can make it straight in. I'm going to need to establish hover about here. And then hopefully keep it uh, together so I can land. without sliding backwards. And there it is. Turbine set to troll. Turbine uh, set to... or throttle set to low. Or idle or whatever. And now we're just waiting for the turbine to settle down. And we can increase the speed at which the turbine slows down by carefully increasing the prop pitch. But we have to be careful not to lift off because this prop this rotor has uh, lots of inertia. And when I increase the pitch, you can see the helicopter wants to lift off because there's enough lift still in the rotor. But once it slows down enough, I can uh, increase it to stall speed like that, and that will rapidly slow the rotor down to zero, or at least slow to low speeds. So there you go. That's a helicopter in Kerbal Space Program. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, see you next time.